All right, Javas, and welcome to exercise one of module three. We are learning the fundamentals of variables, initializing them, declaring them, and using them to do something interesting. We're going to set up our class now. If you have not already worked through, meaning read and typed in the code from our module core concepts, you should pause this video and go do that straight away. If you have, then you're all set to go, which means that you have a project called Online Course, and you've made a package called Week 3. We are going to build a new class called Road Trip. And let me pull the road trip in here. And there's road trip. So as we've learned before, NetBeans will set us up with the skeleton of a class that we can use to code the rest of our um, the rest of our stuff. And so we have a class that's already automatically been placed in our week three package, and we have a class declaration. Now let's comment our code. My computer's name is Dolores, um, but Dolores doesn't know how to program yet. Maybe in five years, Dolores will learn. And so let's comment what this class is going to do. This class simulates uh, basic uh, recorded data about a road trip to Moab, Utah. If you've not been to Moab, Utah, maybe this little programming exercise will spark your interest. So as we learned last week, a Java program begins executing in a special method. A method is a block of code inside of a class that does something. And main's method, the thing that it does, is it provides the front door into any application. No matter what application, no matter how large, it begins with the lines of code that start in main. And so we have a declaration for this. It's public, meaning any other class can run it. Public static, we don't know what that means. Void means this method does not return any data. And the name of the method is main. And then we have to provide it some basic information to make this method knowable to the compiler as the main method. So even though we aren't using a string array, which is what this means, we are still required to declare it. So in good coding form, we are going to label what our closing curly braces are closing. So notice that this curly brace is the end of main. It's indented one tab in inside the class. Our outermost curly brace closes class road trip. So I'm going to label close class road trip. Now remember, because this is a Java class, the first letter starts with a capital letter. It is convention in Java that instead of using underscores, we capitalize the first letter of every subsequent word inside a name of a class. All right, so the core concepts for this module discuss the declaration of variables. A variable is a named container for, excuse me, for a particular type of data. And in the uh, core concepts, we used int types. Int types store integer values. Now we, um, let's imagine, we'll just start here. We're going to say that we're simulating driving a car, in this case my car, which is a Mazda protege. We're going to drive it all the way from here to Moab, Utah, and do some canyoneering and some mountain biking and, well, anything else we want to do. There's a bunch of stuff to do in Moab. So, um, for example, we can simulate that this car has some sort of uh, maximum number of passengers. So we say to the compiler, this is an integer type variable. This is the name, max passengers, and it's read because we have to either end our statement, meaning we've created an empty container for max passengers, or we have to give it an initial value. So this is a four-door car, and you could squeeze someone in the middle of the back seat so you could technically store five people. So we have created a variable, max passengers, and we've used the assignment operator, the equals, to take what's on the right, the value 5, and store it in the variable max passengers. Now, we are going to introduce a couple of other types of variables. And what you're probably thinking is, can Java only store numbers? The answer is no. Now, when we add a 
text variable or a variable that can store text, the name of that type is string. So what type of car was I driving? I was driving a Mazda Protege. And let's end our statement with a semicolon. This was a 1996 Mazda Protege. Now, the interesting thing about string type variables is that notice that int is lowercase, lowercase int, which means this is a primitive type variable. By the way, I hope you're coding along with me. It's really important to learn to code, to do coding. So do this with me. Pause the program or the video if you need to get caught up. But keep with me here. So what we're doing is we are building containers and loading them up with some initial values. And so we've got a Mazda Protege car. I can also store a string type, and uh, I'm a little bit of an odd duck, and I like to name my cars. And I named, uh, actually I didn't name Ned Free. Ned Free was named by my best friend who sold me his car. He named the car Ned Free. So we can store this data in two string variables. We can store the number of passengers it holds in an int type variable. And as we've learned before, we can print out data that we have stored in variables in uh, using the print line method. Now let's review. This system.out.print is a method call. The name of the method, meaning it's a chunk of code that does something. In our case, the print line method knows how to take data from the, the calling class, meaning a road trip class, that's located inside its parentheses. It takes whatever's in there, and it sends it to a magic set of code that's buried inside the computer, and that chunk of code knows how to route whatever's in those parentheses to the console so we can see it. That print line method lives on two Java objects. We're not quite sure what those mean yet, but one of them is out, and the out object represents the output console on the computer, and the system object that out lives in. See, I'm reading it from right to left. Print line is on out. Out is inside the system object. And that is the utility method that we'll be using a lot in the next week or two to see what's going on inside the program. So remember, print line just prints stuff. It's not ever doing any operations on our data. So let's just make sure that we have this data loaded up the way we want. So let's say, let's just start with a little flag to the user. So we're going to say road trip simulator. I just put the stars there to make it look like an official title. Uh, and then let's, ooh, look what it's doing. As I type, the magic dot operator is called the access operator. So if I backspace, it's red because I have to finish the statement. The compiler isn't happy if I just say system.out because it doesn't know what to do with that. But if I type the dot key, the period, I see a menu pop up. Now this menu seems like it has a bunch of stuff on there that we don't understand, but I can give you the framework for seeing what's going on. The first thing we're seeing up here is the Java documentation for this entire object, the print stream object that allows us to print stuff to the console. Now this is designed to be used for all sorts of different things, not just printing text. So there are a number of notes in here that won't be useful for us. The other thing that popped up below where I type system.out dot is it's giving me the chance to see all the different things that I could do, all the different methods that the out object has inside of it. We can append, we can close the object, uh, but we're mostly interested in seeing that the object can print a bunch of stuff. Now if we scroll and see, okay, I can print line. Notice all of these print lines. What's going on here? I see print line, and then inside parentheses, I see a word that we're going to start to recognize as a type, and then in brown, there is a, a variable, or like x. Now in this case, what this is saying is I can write a print line method call, meaning I'm sending something to print line, 
and I can give it a string x, which means I can pass it any variable that is of type string, and it can be called anything I want. And uh, we notice that it will also print integers, which are uh, numbers that we're familiar with. It can print doubles, can print uh, doubles have uh, decimal places in them. And uh, so this print line object and me sorry, the print line method is very versatile. So uh, with that out of the way, let's keep going. So I want to make sure that I have loaded up my car make with uh, the appropriate value, 1996 Mazda Protege. So I can combine literal string values, meaning literal text in quotation marks, with variable text. So I can say uh, make of car being driven. Make, let's just say make of car. And a colon. Notice I put a little space here so it prints out nicely. And then what do I want to tack on the end of make of car? I want to tack the variable car make that currently stores Mazda Protege, 1996 Mazda Protege. And notice that I can also print out the number, uh, the max number of passengers. Let's say max passengers. All right, so we can run this to just verify that we are in fact creating variables and we can print them out. So I can come up here to run, run file. Notice I can run it as a project, but I have to tell the compiler that this is my main project. So I can come back over here on the left and I can say set as main project. So now if I go to run main project, it will ask me that uh, online course does not have a main class set. So because I have my variables class, which I programmed in the um, core concepts, I can say, do you want me to run road trip or variables? Well, let's run road trip. All right, so here's our output over here on the right side. We have indeed seen that print line will accept both literal values, meaning it's the human version, the human readable version of string data. And we have to put that in double quotes. And then it squished the value of car make on the uh, end of this literal string, make of car. So note, this plus has nothing to do with addition. It's actually called the concatenation operator, which means squishing together two things. So what the print line method does is it's going to combine whatever's inside these parentheses, and it will print them out. Now note, I can chain all sorts of stuff into the same print line statement. So I could come here and tack more literal text, car make, that can... So let's say I want to use the same print call. So I'm going to move max passengers up to here. Now let's just uh, make a note of a few of the ways that I'm using the keyboard to do this. So uh, we always have our undo available, so that's control Z. So I'm undoing so I can redo what I did and do it in slow motion for you. Um, it's utterly and critically important that you slow down and take your time to learn the keyboard shortcuts for manipulating code. If you sit down next to a professional programmer, you will notice that the mouse gets very alone, gets cold and alone sitting over on the right side of the keyboard because going to the mouse and moving the cursor around is slow. Not only is it slow, but it's significantly less precise than using the keyboard. So a couple of uh, things to practice are uh, navigating your cursor, and you can hold down the control key when you use left and right, and it will jump, uh, uh, jump words. So if I need to move farther over to get max passengers easily, I hold down control with my left hand, and I just tap my arrows with my right hand key, and then when I get to max passengers, I want to select this variable, and I want to cut it, meaning I want to take it from where it is, put it in a temporary storage, and then paste it somewhere else. So I'm going to hold down Control and Shift at the same time. Shift gives me the selectability, and then I write arrow twice. Notice that it knows that the start of that word passengers with the capital P is a new word, so I have to hit write arrow twice. 
Then I'm going to hold down Control and tap X for cut. And I'm going to pop up a line and do Control tap V for paste. And now I have the single print line call that can, uh, includes several string literals uh, concatenated with several string type variables. All right. Now this line I don't need anymore. So to delete a line in, in NetBeans, we hold down Control and tap X. Now X will get rid of a line. It's also cutting the line. So in theory, I could come back and paste that line in again as much as I want. But usually, if we're using uh, cut, we are uh, we can delete a line or we can paste it. In this case, I just pasted it and sent it off into the abyss, and I'll never see it again. So let's make sure that I can still run this. Notice that now my program concatenated that, and so I have both pieces of data on the same line. All right, great. So let's speed this up a bit. We've got this idea that we can declare variables of several types and print them out. And I'm going to build up a couple of additional variables that we'll use in our simulation so we can get some exposure to different primitive type variables. So uh, one thing that we might want to flag is whether or not this car is full. So let's say that we are uh, publishing our trip online and we are asking folks if they want to join us and we want to be able to declare whether or not this car is full. Now full or not full is a, uh, a set of values that is modeled by a boolean. Boolean means true or false, on or off, yes or no. And so I can say boolean. I want a chunk of data in memory that only stores a value of either true or false and it's going to be called car full and I can initialize it to false because it's only me now what we might want to know then is also int current number of passengers so in this case I'm starting out alone so I made another integer variable and I initialized it to one okay see where this is going once we have these variables then we can manipulate them one of the things that happens on long road trips is that we uh, have to fill that car up with petrol. And so we're going to want to track how far we've gone and then perhaps how much money we have in our budget. And we can use some operators to practice uh, adjusting how much budget we have remaining based on how much petrol we had to buy. So let's uh, make this a type double. Double means a number that has a decimal place. So let's start with trip odometer. So we're starting out in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We have driven nowhere, so we have a odometer reading of zero. And when I w uh, roll out of Pittsburgh, out of the Fort Pitt tunnel, I have a trip budget, meaning a bunch of cash in my pocket that's equal, um, and I assigned that variable the value of 300. Now notice we're using our equal sign operator, the assignment operator, to take the value on the right and assign it to the variable on the left. These are gray, as you should have read in our module core concepts, because I have only declared and initialized the trip odometer variable. I have not used it. So it stays gray because the compiler, the precompiler, wants us to know that we haven't done anything with it. And if we have our program working and we have a gray variable, then it was an unnecessary declaration. So we've got a budget. And uh, let's also include our destination, the distance to our destination. So we are, in this case, going to uh, Moab. So I can make a double variable called distance to Moab, Utah. I did some uh, map work online, and I found that it is 1,806 miles away. That's a lot of miles. It takes about 27 hours, apparently, to get there. Done. I've done that drive many a time, but not from Pittsburgh, from Minnesota. And then once we get there, we might want to have a variable that notes it's a flag variable, meaning it's just on or off, yes or no. Have we reached our destination? So destination reached. And let's go. Oh, me. Oof. And uh, we have not reached that destination yet. So we've set up our variables so we can... Uh, make a note up here so we are declaring and initializing variables and then down here we're going to begin our simulation of the the road trip 
Now you're thinking, why are we simulating a road trip? Well, for one reason, Java was originally designed as a language optimized for running on what are called embedded systems, which are computers that serve a single purpose inside another device, like a car uh, GPS system or um, the computer inside of your car. So Java works nicely for storing data that might be adjusted based on how far the car has moved, that interacts with sensors and things like that. Now I'm going to include two other utility variables that we'll play with in just a second. Uh, double, I'm going to say leg distance, so we can calculate how far a particular leg is. And we can store it in this variable. Now notice I am not giving it a value yet because I don't have any value to give it. So I am declaring only. So uh, declaring this variable but not initializing it. Meaning I did not give it a, an introductory value. Alright, so your next task is to pause this video and I want you to get comfortable. I want you to print out all of these variables that we loaded up. I want you to get practice building lines that look like this. Note that we can uh, print not just strings, but we can print um, uh, we can print doubles. I can just spit out my distance to Moab, Utah, and just send that to the console. So you can see it'll print strings, it'll print ints, it'll print doubles. I want you to get a nice printout of all of these variables, and then when you are set, you can run the next video. Alright, we will catch you on the flip side. Happy variabilizing.